Hi guys, Bert Camera here with uh, Smack FPV, and uh, today I'm basically doing a very short video talking about frequency control. For all of you guys that are new to FPV racing, or all of you that have been in the RC helicopters or RC airplanes or any other RC discipline, um, we've been getting a lot of questions about frequency control. What are the right frequencies to use? How do you determine what transmitter to get? What receiver to get? All right, we're just gonna break it down into simple, simple terms here. Basically, at this moment, and again, uh, the FPV market is changing very, very quickly. So, by the time you watch this video, things might be different. But as of this moment, there's five different frequency bands, and each band has eight different channels. So, if you do the simple math, eight channels per band, five bands, there's a total of 40 channels. Now, that doesn't mean that you can fly 40 people at a time. Uh, based on experience, you can only probably fly about five people at a time. There's some arguments out there, people that say that you can fly six or seven at a time, really not easy. Um, for me personally, when I fly with friends or we go to a race, I would prefer if there were only four pilots at a time, five is okay, anything beyond five is pushing it. Now, a few things to consider. So your transmitter in itself, you can purchase a transmitter that transmits at 25 milliwatts or 200 milliwatts or 600 milliwatts. If you wanna fly with a couple of friends, two or three friends, the best choice for you is a 200 milliwatt transmitter. It's weak enough to allow you, allow you to fly with other people, but it's strong enough to give you a good strong signal while flying with other people. If you wanna fly with more than a couple, two, three friends, you might wanna consider a 25 milliwatt transmitter. Um, basically, lower uh, output power, so it allows you to fly with more people. If you wanna fly with just another friend, two of you, or by yourself, then sure, go for a 600 milliwatt. But keep in mind, if you have a 600 milliwatt transmitter, you're gonna be very limited when it comes to flying with other people because you're gonna overpower everybody else. Now, simple rule of thumb. Once again, if you look at your screen at this point, you can see the different available frequencies, different available channels and bands. So as you can see on your screen, you have a Boscam A, Boscam B, um, you, I guess you could call it DJ, DJI or Boscam E, um, and then you have the F, with, F uh, band, which is Fat Shark, and you have the R, which is Race Band. Fat Shark um, is one of the pioneer bands or pioneer uh, frequencies out there on the market. And if you look at the Fat Shark, uh, channel one is 5740, and then it goes all the way up through 5760, 80, 5800, all the way up to channel eight, which is 5880. If you're flying, for example, on Fat Shark band with other friends, um, you can get away with splitting channels into twos. For example, you can fly on 5740, which is channel one Fat Shark, and then make sure that everybody else is at least two channels apart. Channel one, channel three, channel five, channel seven, or channel six and channel eight. The goal here is to have at least, at minimum, 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 40 megahertz of spacing. So if you look at the chart, Fat Shark starts at 5740 for channel one, and channel three is 5780, so that's 40 megahertz of spacing. That would be the bare minimum that we, were re we could recommend. And to keep this uh, in layman terms, there's a lot of things to consider here because there's uh, frequency overlaps due to harmonics and all kinds of various things. But for the most part, 40 megahertz spacing would work if you're using a 200 milliwatt transmitter or lower. If you're using a 600 milliwatt transmitter, then really you shouldn't be flying with anybody else because you're gonna create serious problems with the other guys. They're all gonna be getting your feed in and out uh, throughout their flights and, and more than likely they're gonna end up crashing. So another thing to consider uh, a lot is before you plug in your quad, please make an announcement or make sure that the people that are flying around you are not on the same channel you're at. Um, a lot of the guys at my local field just literally plug in their quads and they go fly 
they crashed two or three people um, because of uh, interference or because they plug in too close to their ground stations um, and they just don't even say I'm sorry. Be courteous to others. If you're gonna plug in your quad, the number one rule of thumb is please ask. Make sure that your quad is not on a frequency that would interfere with anybody else. And number two, don't plug in your quad anywhere near anybody else's ground station. Walk out minimum 30 feet out into the field before you plug in. And always please make sure that everybody knows right before you plug in. Because as you plug in, they're going to get a hit regardless of the frequency you're in. And that hit usually goes away. But if it doesn't go away, you need to be ready to unplug just out of courtesy so that your buddies don't end up crashing their multi-rotors as well. So once again, simple rule of thumb. If you're flying with somebody else, try to have a 200 milliwatt transmitter or lower. If you're flying with somebody else, announce the fact that you're going to plug in ahead of time. And please make sure you're not on their frequency and you plug in at least 30 feet away from their ground stations. Other than that, everything here is pretty simple. Every single transmitter has a different uh, configuration for changing channels and bands. Every single receiver has the same deal, different configuration for cha changing channels and bands. Make sure your transmitter, of course, matches your receiver. Uh, make sure you're on a, a channel that is at least 40 uh, megahertz away from your buddies as you're flying with them. And, you know, for the most part, the most popular channels are the Fat Shark band channels. Once again, channel 1 through 8, 57, 40, all the way up to 58, 80. Race band is becoming popular. Boss cam is popular. But don't assume that if you're on a boss cam channel, you're going to be uh, spaced correctly away from somebody else who's flying, for example, on Fat Shark. You might not be. For example, if you look at boss cam A, channel 1 is 58.65. Fat Shark, channel 8, is 58.80. That's only 15 megahertz away. Fat Shark channel 7 is 5860. And once again, Boss Cam A channel 1 is 5865, only 5 megahertz away. That's way too close. The minute you plug in, it's going to create a huge amount of interference to that other person. And in fact, that interference might never go away, and you're just guaranteed to crash them. So the fact that you're flying or that you're dialed into a different band doesn't necessarily mean that you're not interfering with your friend flying in a different band. Always make sure that your actual megahertz are at least, once again, 40, 40 apart. Um, and you can use this chart as a reference or you can just simply go online and do a search on Google for um, FBB uh, channels and bands and you can get a chart like this. Or simply go to smackfbv.com, click on the downloads link and you can download this chart. Thank you for watching.